now there is no time to lose For Jesus has from the dead been raised Joy comes to all, may our God be praised Halle, Alleluia Halle, Halle, Alleluia Halle, Alleluia Halle, Halle, Alleluia Halle, Alleluia
Good morning. Huh. Well, friends, if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Reverend Tori Mullen. My pronouns are they and she. And it's a real pleasure to have you at worship with us this morning. I will let you know I'm going to stay masked. I have a cold, not COVID. Uh, so I won't be licking anybody after the service, all right? Just keep it kosher. A couple announcements uh, before we get into worship this morning. The first is, how many folks came out last night to the fundraiser? Very good. And so if you were there, you know that uh, just over $1,800 were raised for displaced Ukrainian families in our area. So a huge thank you to Hampton Helping Hands for Displaced Ukrainians Committee and all of the fantastic musical talent that came out. It was um, jaw-dropping uh, at times, that's for sure. And uh, we'll get a, a reprisal of one of the songs from last night later this morning. So if you missed it, uh, you'll get to enjoy uh, Pete Seeger's song as part of our worship. I also want to invite up Heather who has an announcement from the Hampton Food Basket. I think this was done to tease me. <laughs> <laughs> this Wednesday, approximately 80 clients will be coming to pick up items from our clothing drive. We asked for clean, gently used clothing, shoes and boots, linens and towels. We had a great response. However, if you have suitable items, the drop-off date is extended for today and Monday. I have keys for the back door, so please talk to me after the service or give me a call and we can make arrangements. I'm sure that you have noticed in many stores that Christmas is coming. As food coordinator, I have to get through November but I have already ordered the turkeys for Christmas. Our client day is December the 15th. Normally, I've been ordering 130, uh, food for 130 families, but at Christmas, I'm preparing for 180. We will be meeting to fine tune the order and we'll send out a more detailed list. Keep in mind that we can always use canned goods, pasta, and cereal. Now, White Gifts Sunday, uh, normally would be the second Sunday in December, but wait till we're just sure which day, whether it's going to be the first Sunday or the second. And if you want to skip shopping, a financial donation would be much appreciated, and you can do that through the church or directly to the food basket. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. And as it is uh, Communion Sunday, the change collected in the offering plate also goes to uh, the Benevolent Fund. So if you've you got some extra coins in there you don't know what to do with, uh, feel free to pop them in the offering plate, and then you'll hear them as the plate is brought forward later. Our territorial acknowledgement. On a day like today when we discuss war and peace, it's important for us to remember that our town, Hampton, and the surrounding area is Willistogic, the homeland of the Willistogic people. It is unceded and unsurrendered land, and it is with this acknowledgement that we enter into worship this morning. I invite you to say with me our opening prayer. On this day of remembrance, O God, we give thanks for peacekeepers and pacifists, for those who served on the front lines and those who protest and march, for those who volunteered and those who waited anxiously at home, for those who hoped things would get better and those who could not stand by and wait. We give thanks for those who believe that the world could be a better place. We remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, trusting that others could and would carry the torch. We give thanks for those who were once enemies, who have become friends and allies. Amen. Remembrance Sunday and Remembrance Day can be um, a time of conflicting feelings, 
questions, doubts, skepticisms, and pain. And so as we light our Christ light this morning, we also offer up all of those emotions that today might bring, that this week might bring to God, knowing that God holds them for us. And I invite you to stand and sing with us, O God, our help in ages past. to take a quiet moment of meditation this morning as I read our prayer of transformation. Holy One, when our lives are comfortable, we live in relative safety. It can be all too easy to forget that what we enjoy today has come at a great cost. For some, the price was their last breath. For others, it was wounds to body, mind, or spirit. Our inability to resolve conflicts through peaceable means has caused harm beyond measure. Forgive us for using violence as a way to resolve our differences. On days like this, we remember those who defend our freedoms and we say, lest we forget. Yet too often we forget that the wounds to mind and spirit can last a lifetime. Forgive us for not remembering once the poppies have been put away. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, but we have often focused on what divides us rather than what brings us together. Forgive us for our reluctance to do the hard work of peacemaking. For all these things, and for those which we name before you now in the silence of our hearts, forgive us. 
And before our assurance this morning, I'm going to invite Todd and David and uh, Daniel to come up and to sing for us a Pete Seeger song. Thank you, gentlemen. Jesus said, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And so receive the good news. In Christ, you and I are forgiven. Our loving God desires that all people, indeed the entire world, be restored to right relationship with God and one another, so that we might live in peace together. We'll now begin our act of remembrance, and so I'll invite you to stand as you're able. Thank <laughs> you. 
be seated. I'm going to invite Anne to come forward now to share something special with us. show you. This is the picture that they're seeing. What do you see in the picture? How many poppies? Could you count them? No. Lots and lots of poppies. And when we are remembering for Remembrance Day, it's nice to have a symbol that we can see and have. That's why I'm wearing a poppy. And in my pocket, I just happened to have some pocky, poppy stickers. So, Erilyn, would you t take one off and give one to Abby and one to Kylan? And, oh, t uh, okay. That's, or just take the sticker off, whatever you want to do. And I have a story to tell you about poppies. And this story has to do with a man named Dr. John McRae. He was a doctor over in Europe where there was fighting going on, and he was in a field hospital. Now, in, along with Dr. John McRae, there was another doctor, and they were friends, and his name was Dr. Francis Scriminger. Only he was called Dr. Scrim. Scrim was his nickname. And some people, like my husband Neil, called him Uncle Scrim because he was Neil's great uncle. So one day when they were in the field hospital, John McRae started writing. And I can imagine that he might look outside and see. Do you want to hold that, Aaron? and might see all those poppies. And so he started with, in Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row. How many of you people, and I think you might need to be in your 60s, 70s, or 80s, remembered learning to memorize that poem in school? <laughs> ah. That mark our place, and in the sky the larks, the birds, are still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below. And he went on to finish that poem. So John McRae took that poem, and Erilyn, can you hold the mic for me right about here? Thanks. And he wrote, when he finished writing it, he folded it very neatly, and he put it in an envelope, and he sent it to the Spectator magazine in London, England. Well, that was pretty exciting. And he waited anxiously while he was helping people, patients, and finally, an envelope came back to him. So he opened the envelope really a little nervously, and they rejected his poem. Did you ever have a time when you thought you did a really good drawing and maybe you were at your grandparents' place, your parent, you were at home, and you found it later in the waste paper basket? <laughs> oh, my goodness, that's a mistake that sometimes grandparents make. So he was pretty disappointed. And he went like this. And he happened to have a waste basket handy, and he just put it in the waste basket. Well, his friend, Dr. Scrim, was right there near him, and, and he took the paper out of the basket. 
And Uncle Scrim read it, and he said, John, this is good. Don't give up on this. Did you ever have something that you felt like you were going to give up? You know, sometimes? So he smoothed it right out, because he couldn't make photocopies back in those days, in the days of World War I. And he put it in an envelope, sealed it, and sent it to Punch Magazine in London, England. Well, they accepted it. And they published it in, in their December um, issue in 1915. And that is a poem that if you haven't heard it, look it up or get your grandparents to <laughs> say that special poem for you. So, thank you. I also have another symbol here because I started to think about all those soldiers and there were so many who died or came back and, and weren't quite the same as they, before they left. And so I remember that each one of them is special and each one of them was special to their mom or dad or their family. And that made me think of apples. Well, let's just look at these apples that we have here. And I'm glad that Kelly's in the choir this morning because Kelly expressed curiosity online about why the, uh, the apples were special. Well, Kelly, you're going to find out right now. Okay. Hmm. Are those apples all the same? No. Would you, can you find any two that are exactly the same? I don't think we're going to find this. Like people, every one of us is different. I'm going to take this apple because I put some elastic on it because I didn't want to come up with a sharp knife. So when I was home, and Erilyn, I'm putting you, can you? <laughs> when I was home, I cut this apple inside so I could see what it look like inside. So I'll just take these elastics off the apple. Can you see? What is in the center of the apple? A star. A star. Just like each one of us. We're like a star. We're so special. And we're going to be doing something special with these apples this morning as our way of remembering how special we are and how special all the people who fought in the war to give us a free country to live in. So I think we better go downstairs and continue with our special apples with a star in the center. So... Abby and Kylan and Erilyn, would you each like to choose two apples to take downstairs with you? <laughs> and if you've got three apples, that's all right. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, and it's got a bite out of it. All right, but that's good. I washed them all. Okay, I'll just tuck this under here. And let's be on our way. Oops, better leave the mic behind. Patience is a virtue, but not until you're 12. Well, thank you, Anne, for sharing those symbols with all of us uh, and a reminder of uh, something that maybe we can pass on to the little people in our lives. I'm going to invite Bill to come forward now to share our scripture with us. Reading from Micah uh, 4, verses 1 to 5, from the New uh, Revised Standard Version. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's temple shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised up above the hills. Peoples shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, 
Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit, all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. For all the peoples walk, each in the name of its God, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. pray with me, friends. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and refuge. Amen. The prophet Micah shares a vision of a world where declarations of war are exchanged for treaties of peace. The prophet Micah shares a vision of a world where precious metals are not hammered into weapons, but instead crafted into the ordinary tools of farming. The prophet Micah shares a vision of a world where young people do not play war games, but instead run wild in the fields and streets at ease and at play. This is a vision that any one of us might have dreamt up 
last night. Just as Pete Seeger sings, it is a strange dream of peace. A world without military maneuvers, peacekeeping operations, missile testing, summits and talks, replaced instead with something more. Perhaps you've heard the saying that the opposite of war is not, in fact, peace, that peace is merely the absence of war. The opposite of war, instead, is justice or creation. Where war is destruction, justice is the building up of communities. And so we are not called to be merely peacekeepers, but peace builders. This is something I was able to explore in depth back in 2018. The United Church of Canada and the Student Christian Movement of Canada uh, sent me to attend a peace conference on the Korean Peninsula. And there I was able to learn about the history of the peninsula, the devastating effects of the Japanese occupation, as well as the Korean War. And I also learned a little bit about Canada's role in the Korean War. I was even able to travel to the demilitarized zone, the DMZ, between the north and south, and hear from families who were separated by the border. The lessons I learned during that experience have stuck with me, that we are not called to be peacekeepers, but peace builders. We are not called merely to stop destruction, but to create and build up justice. Micah, too, has a vision of creation and community building. Like in Seeger's song, nations have gathered together and the God of Abraham and Jacob arbitrates peace between them. Person after person, community after community, nation after nation enters a covenant with one another that there be no more war. And then the real work begins because this peace must not be mere lip service. No, it requires the dismantling of the war machine and closing the curtains on the theater of war. The weapons must be deconstruction, deconstructed, remade, and recreated into tools of justice and community. They can no longer destroy, but instead create, till, plant, tend, and harvest. Time is now spent in the fields as farmers, instead of as soldiers trampling the livelihood of neighboring nations. And most radically, we have the next few lines. But they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. Micah's vision includes property, livelihood, sustenance for all. They shall all sit under their own vines and fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. I get goosebumps when I read those words. Because it's a vision of a world where everyone has enough and there is no more fear. The kind of fear that Irina and Vlad spoke of last night at the fundraising concert. The fear for your life and the life of your city as bombs fall. The displaced Ukrainian families that many of you are in relationship right now, they know the fear which Micah speaks of. And imagine a world with no more fear like that. But Micah doesn't even stop there. After speaking of this abundance, after speaking of this absence of fear, Micah says what I think is the most radical words in the Hebrew Bible. For all the peoples walk, each in the name of its God. But we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever.
Peace is understanding. Peace is building bridges between communities, cultures, and religions. Micah in the Hebrew Bible shares an image of interfaith and intercultural relations. We don't always think of the Hebrew Bible as being very supportive of interfaith relationships, but that's a mistake. It was a different world from our own. War was not just a battle between humanity, but a battle between gods. The mightier the God, the greater the battle victory. And Micah has shared a vision where the God of Abraham and Jacob is not a warmongering deity, but an arbiter of peace. Building covenantal relationships of peace, not just between God and God's chosen, but also between nations. Micah is positioning this God as inherently different. A God who creates, who values relationship, who makes a way for peace to be lived out. This peace is not made through homogeny. It's not made by exporting our ideals onto others. Instead, it is the hard-won peace of deep listening, of empathy, compassion, and understanding. It's a lasting peace because it invites the other to come as they are with their own values and beliefs and to build something new in the midst of that. But building peace is difficult. It requires patience, determination, a lot of hope, and integrity. But it is possible. And it is a dream worth dreaming night after night after night. It is a dream that has been gifted to us by our ancestors in the faith and taken up by each generation that comes. It is worth following the radical call to love our enemies. And it is a risky business dismantling the comforting weapons of war, of putting dreams into reality. But I wonder if we can afford to live in a world where we don't risk peace whether our children can afford it. And so friends, my prayer is that our dreams continue to be sweet and that they continue to inspire our waking selves and our radical living. Amen. I'm going to invite our usher to bring our offering forward. Each day of our lives, we are presented with opportunities to respond to God's love and give of ourselves in faithful service. There are many ways to give each according to our own abilities, with all gifts working together for the sake of the mission and ministry entrusted to us by God. And so we are invited to give as able and to support the work of this community of faith. Thank you, Steve. And let's respond with our offertory prayer. God of abundance, we thank you for the gifts that we present to you now. We ask that you receive them and bless them. May they enable us to serve the world in ways that inspire hope and make your love known. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll now invite our servers to come forward and join me at the communion table. For those of us who are joining us online, perhaps you want to get a little glass of juice and a cracker so that you can participate along with us. And come to my side, scoot in a little bit. Get cozy. All right.
So I'll invite you to respond with the bolded text on the screen. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. Loving God, source of all, we thank and praise you with our lips and with our lives that having created us and all things through your word, you welcome our prayers and praise for the goodness of creation and the glory of redemption, we praise you. For the law of holiness inviting our obedience and the call of prophets rebuking our disobedience, we praise you. Therefore, with all that is seen and unseen and with all the faithful of every time and place, we join in saying our praise and thanksgiving, holy, holy, holy God, power of life and love, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna through the ages. Blessed is the one who comes to bring your justice to earth. Loving God, Holy One, we offer you praise and thanksgiving over this bread and cup because in Jesus, your Son, you have joined yourself forever to us, uniting all of creation. Now, therefore, we gratefully remember Jesus' birth into our humanity, baptism for our trespasses, compassion for our suffering, and intimacy with our frailty. Rebuke our pride, bearing of the cross with its death and rising from the tomb by the power of God. On the night before he died, it was Jesus who took a loaf of bread and he gave thanks for this ordinary food and he broke it and said, take and eat. Remember whenever you do this, remember me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. Saying, this is the new covenant. Remember me. We'll claim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. Loving God, creative power, blessing your name, we seek your spirit. And so come to us and bless these gifts of bread and juice, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, a sign of our forgiveness in him and our adoption as children of God. As we eat and we drink together, make us one with Christ and one in Christ, a sign of your kingdom in all the world. This meal of praise and thanksgiving we offer you, loving God, through Jesus, our friend, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
bread of life. Covenant. We continue our meal with a time of prayer. So I invite you to find a posture of prayer that's comfortable for you. We offer to you, O God, our prayers for those who seek justice and resist evil. We pray for those who need your presence and strength to stand firm for those who oppose the use of violence in any form and faithful response to the Prince of Peace. But we also pray for those who are prepared to be firm to protect those in danger. We pray, we pray for those who walk with others who need strength. We pray for those who protest, those who organize, those who give sacrificially on behalf of others. 
We pray for those who speak the unpopular truth, who protect the unpopular victims, who choose the unpopular path of peace. We pray for those who do not let their desire for justice hinder the requirements of justice, and for those who do not let their zeal for justice override the call for peace. And now we respond by singing together the prayer Jesus taught his friends. you to stand as you're able so I can bless you. The Spirit of God is upon you and has anointed you. You are the salt of the earth and you bring light to the world. You are not too young or too old. You are not too rich or too needy to bring good news to the impoverished, to give a hand to the brokenhearted, and to live out freedom and pardon through the gifts that you have been given. So remember to pack peace in your toolbox, hope in your briefcase, love in your lunchbox, and may integrity, honesty, and joy be your designer wear of choice. Do not be frightened, for you are never alone. The God in whose image you are made will walk with you and guide you today, tomorrow, and every day. Go in peace, friends. But I invite you to stay seated for the postlude. (laughs) 